Hi there. Well, here we are. It's now day four, May the 4th. And uh, that was, uh, I thought I'd do the introduction with uh, yesterday's piece and, and where we are so far this month. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, well, what tends to happen once I've, once I've done the video and once I've uh, recorded it and everything on here, uh, before I then upload it onto SoundCloud, I then go into another piece of software and, and master it to bring it up to volume. And I, it was interesting because I was listening to it and I was thinking, it doesn't sound very much like um, how it would normally uh, while I'm doing the recordings. And I thought I'd demonstrate that today. So what we've just done is we've heard the mastered version uh, or the, the, the version that I put on SoundCloud. And then we can now hear, we'll now hear the difference between what we're listening to when I'm creating the music and, uh, and what ends up uh, actually on, on the site. So let's just hear a little bit of this again. Um, make sure that's all stopped. There you go. I'm starting to learn all the mistakes that I'm that I've been making for the last couple of weeks, um, or last week or so. Actually, is it? It's only been a week since I started doing these live, these live videos. Anyway, let's have a listen to this. <laughs> So there you go. It's interesting, isn't it? Because actually a lot of the advice for when you're doing, when you're sort of creating and mixing, you do it at a much lower, lower volume. And, and then when it's mastered, it brings it back up to, I suppose, zero dB um, maximum. But uh, it's, that's quite a marked difference. And I said, and the interesting thing is one of, one of the bits of software that I have on here is by Sonar Works. Let's just, I'll just, oh no, I've closed it. I'm not going to open it because sometimes it crashes. Actually, having said that, it's now, it's in here because I've got it as a, there you go. So I've got this and this is set up so that, uh, in fact, can you see it? No. There it is. What I'll actually, I've now worked out how I can bring this. So I'm now there. And I'm going to bring Sonar Works back up. And I now, what I want to do is unlock all of these. <laughs> That'll make it easier. Mind you, the whole thing will now potentially fly all over the place but what I'm going to do I can now select this window bring it down and then you should be able to see that <laughs> that's and I'll bring me up as well um, and then that'll no I'm going to leave that where it is okay so this is this is a piece of software uh, Sonar Works Reference 4 and it's brilliant because uh, it, it it actually neutralizes your room uh, with headphones, it, it, it has a, a profile where it, it knows what the, the headphones that you've got uh, normally do to the sound. And then it, it compensates for it and, and makes it sound as, as neutral as possible. So it knows that your headphones will, will amp sort of amplify a certain frequency and it then takes that out. And eventually, well, what you're listening to is a completely flat line. 
and it and it and it's brilliant the way it works. Uh, I've got a version which actually does the room as well, and you basically get this little little microphone that you can move around where your head would be, and it then finds a profile for your room based on all the things that you have in your room. And I I, I must admit it's it's really good. Unfortunately, when I'm doing this, I have to I switch it off because it then brings, as you can see, if I then move my mouse up here. You can see this lowers the whole thing by 13.3 dB, so it would make it even quieter uh, for you. And I'm hoping that it's not too quiet for you when you're listening, because if, if it is, please message me and let me know, because it's one of the things I'm hearing something very different to what you're hearing. And the only way I can tell what you're hearing is when I listen to when I listen to the recording <laughs> after by which time it's too late and what we don't want is is sitting there trying sort of straining to hear something in the background but anyway that's that's that piece of software that that is brilliant um for being able to hear the detail and really really make it uh it, well it makes it transferable then someone in a studio can listen to it and if they've got a really good setup they'll hear exactly what you created as well so it gives you much more control over what the end listener or the end user sort of hears and i'm going to lock these just to make sure i don't there you go so it's now all it's now now all going to work <laughs> good um but I thought I thought I'd talk about that because when I was listening to the to it yesterday, it all seemed it all seemed quite quiet. And uh, yeah, it's all to do with the headphones that I've got on and the fact that I can't necessarily. Well, I can't hear what I'm saying uh, through any through through anything. I've got to try and work that out. Um, but also the fact that I'm not hearing what I would normally do when I'm mixing uh, a, a flat version. Um but let me know what you think anyway. So what we'll do is we'll, we've now coming to the fourth day of the month. We've now got to work out what we're going to do differently today. So we'll just start off with that. And there you go. That's OK, one of the things I quite like to do when we get to this stage, because we've had three days of a very similar, very similar tune and, and gradually the accompaniment has, has built up. So what I'd quite like to do today is see what it sounds like without the melody. Um, so what we'll do is we'll we'll duplicate everything that isn't part of the melody. Or the accompaniment um, actually. We might keep that in because it, it adds a little bit of je ne sais quoi. Um, duplicate. <laughs> duplicate, but this would be interesting. So this is this is everything apart from the flutes, the oboes and the clarinets uh, came in in the second half. But anyway, so let's have a listen to this. Thank you. 
Okay, so, and it's interesting listening to that. There's a, there's a couple of things that I'd like to change in that. Uh, just, they stick out when I'm listening to it and they make me think, oh, actually, um, that's something I'd like to get rid of. Uh, so what we're going to do, and one of them are these offbeat chords. And there's one especially that I want, and it's this last one in the first half. And I think that will make that will make a difference. Um, and then there is another bit in the bassoons that I'd quite like to change the uh, dynamics for as well. So what we're, we're going to do, that's articulation, volume. There we go. And what I want to do instead of it, I want it to actually crescendo further across here. Let's just see how that sounds. Um, we'll listen to the whole thing again and then you can see what I've done. I'll stop that there because you can't necessarily see what I'm doing on the top here and I'll move that and actually as we're now in there I'll uh, I'll change it's not that one it's not that one it's that one I want to bring this up so you can see what I've done so the bassoons what I'm increasing here is what I'm increasing here is this 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 little motive here. Let's let should we be out should we be outrageous and bring it up <laughs> as much well and then and actually it'd be more noticeable then. One of the things that they always say is exaggerate dynamics uh, because you can yeah that, that's what you do as a performer. Right. Okay. <laughs> So that's now actually I, I prefer that I prefer that actually quite a lot. There's something that's muddying the whole thing. I think I know what it is. I think it's the cellos. <laughs> what we'll do? Let's let's just see if it is because it it's interesting because you can hear things before it was it was within the mix and then every, the more you listen to something. Uh, the more you start to notice things that you're not happy with and you want to just change and tweak. And what's really interesting about doing this and, and actually doing this live and talking about it while I'm doing it, I, is it encouraging me to do it more? Or is it making me think, because I'm also very, very wary and it, it's early days, really. I don't know how how interesting people are going to find, find this. But, uh, you know... I, I like listening to the weeds and I like sort of figuring those bits out. But let's just what we'll do is we'll see what it sounds like with the cellos. Then I'll take the cellos out and then I'll put them back in. And then if anyone is listening or if, you know, just put a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whether or not you want the cellos, you want the cellos to be there. So they're with the cellos to start with and then I'll take them out. Thank you. 
So could you hear a difference when I had the cellos and when I didn't have the cellos? That's that's the thing. I can I can hear it really clearly. Uh, there's and and it is. They are they are providing the mud. Now what do I do with that? Do I change the sound or do I just just take them out? Um, it would be interesting because. Well, I, I like experimenting with what's with what's there, and then we can see we can see. Well, we give it a chance, really. So we're going to make we're going to, we're going to keep the notes, but we're going to change the articulation from pizzicato to spiccato. So they're going to be much more prominent, uh, and you'll definitely hear definitely hear them now. Uh, it'd be interesting. I've just noticed that. Although they were on yesterday, I hadn't actually entered. They were pizzicato by by luck. And sometimes if I don't actually intentionally make it the articulation that I want, later on in in the month when I'm going down and jumping between them, I get I get results that are that didn't exist originally. So let's have a listen to this. So we'll start off without the without the cellos and I'll bring them in and see if you see if you notice. Well, I, I bet you do. Now the cellos. Now it's interesting hearing that. What I'd quite like to do, because I quite like the texture and I do like the way it's coming through, is it a bit loud? What we'll try now is we'll bring the volume down for the cellos and see if it, we can just get it to sit within the mix. Because you've got the edge of the spiccato and it's not as, I suppose it's not as boomy as the pizzicato would be, uh, it would be nice to have that texture coming through. So we're going to, yeah, so here's the volume. And we'll play it at where it is at the moment, which is minus six. And then I'll gradually bring it down until it sits how I want it within the mix. One of the things, because I quite like it at that level now, what I want to do is then just bring it a little bit above that level, bring it up for water and then take it back down again. So, and we're going to do it like that. I, I love the sea. <laughs> is that a reason for doing for doing this shape? Um, there you go. You're going to see some, some shortcut. Oh, no, I don't want that. That was the wrong button some shortcuts here so does that look like a wave which way is that wave traveling which side would we be surfing on i suppose you'd be surfing on the curving up bit um, but what we're going to do is we're going to select that and then i'm going to do it's a quick shortcut where we just duplicate it right the way across and then that's that's very quick but let's just see if i've done it just about right and if, if not we can just move it Thank you. 
<laughs> what do we think of that? I think we'll we'll keep that as it is, and then it, as you know, it's going to evolve over the next over the next thirty odd days. Actually, it's less than that now, twenty seven days, and then uh, you know, well, we'll see, we'll see, we'll leave it like that because what I haven't done yet is put anything over the top. Although that sounds quite relaxing, and let's just let's just quickly compare what was going on the day before again. I love the, all those little notes coming out. It just rhythm is really if, if you imagine you've got loads of different notes and just picking out little ones. But I've all the notes are there, but little ones are coming out. And it just well, for me, it just I'm not really a dancer, but uh, I love I love rhythms and the interplay, the interplay of notes and the interplay of of, 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 yeah, of, of rhythm and, and notes, notes sticking out and all over the place it's almost is it similar to sort of it's difficult I, in quantum you've got energy flying around and and things happening sort of all over the place and and that's something that fascinates me anyway sort of quantum mechanics and quantum quantum co-location hmm. but but here you have you have this energy and that's why I quite like using waves um, because everything, everything is waves. I think do the Sufi mystics talk about something called Nada Brahma. All is sound. And of course, sound is waves and energy. Anyway, that's yeah, let's uh, let's get back to the music. And what we're going to do is I think we had the oboe before. But I do like the oboe as an instrument, as a solo instrument uh, to start off with. And, and actually, it, it just cuts through and actually it's very expressive. So what we're going to do is we're going to have that that accompaniment. And we're going to see if, if we can find a melody somewhere. And then and then perhaps, well, we'll see. We'll see. So one of the really, and yeah, you can see that I'm jumping around all over the place. But one of the things that I find quite interesting, normally I'd be sitting at home and I'd be having this playing and I'd just be experimenting and, and eventually a tune may come out and then we'd tweak it and do all sorts of things with it. But that changes or it, it, it has a danger of changing when I'm doing a live stream and, and demonstrating what I do. But should I change what I'm doing or what I would normally do because I'm live streaming. Don't know. Um, there's a danger that that could happen, uh, but then would it? Might it be better because I'm live streaming and not doing what I normally do? Um, <laughs> all sorts of questions. Uh, it's been an interesting week of of doing this, and actually, it's been great fun. And I think I'm getting. I, I've made that many mistakes. I think I've worked out what they all are. It's all right making mistakes as long as you can work out what they are and rectify them. Um, it's when you have no idea what's, why it's happening. Um, OK, so what we'll do is we'll play that little tune and then we might... After...
that's it's interesting once someone left a comment or, or yeah left, left a comment saying it sounded a little bit like uh, fiddler on the roof uh, and actually i do like that mode that that uh i like the semitone shift from yeah from the tonic up upper semitone uh so at the moment i've, I've got that going through my head but uh Let's just try. Let's just try that again because I quite like. I like starting melodies with uh, perfect fifths as well, going up a fifth, and yeah. Let's just see. Let's try this again. It's interesting because now you can hear how I'm falling into the trap of of when I was doing it sort of a couple of days ago, the sort of harmonic changes can be surprising, and I quite like the surprise, but sometimes it surprises me. <laughs> and but then that can actually change the melody later on. I think actually I quite like this. The other thing that I love using as well is the tritone, um, the augmented fourth or diminished fifth. Yeah. Um, now the other danger of, of of actually not planning and doing this, you can actually see that I do love just playing playing around and seeing what we'll do is we'll try a recording and and then see so we need the we'll have the metronome on and that will give us four beats to to get ready and I'm going to start with that that perfect fifth with that da dum 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 da and see and see what happens Okay, so that was that was a that was a one that was a first take. Should we have a listen to it? There was a note in there that I didn't like. Uh, there were bits in there that I did like, uh, but should we? Let's just see. I know there's some quick notes in there, and I've got the quantize set on to quavers, so those those will come out very differently. But let's just see what that sounds like. Thank you. 
And he goes, the birth of a melody. <laughs> now, so I'm not quite happy with the beginning. And, it, and it's interesting, you can hear that it works better with uh, the second, the second half seems to work better because it it's more predictable. Um, that note, I think it's I think it's the beginning of bar five. Let's just listen to that and see if see if you can hear it as well. And um, yeah, I think I think that ta dum ta, and then actually that note's definitely wrong. Oops. Is that, is that another? Yes, that's another tritone. Or is it? Oh, da da da. Yeah, it is. Right, okay. That, that. I reckon let's make that one into an F sharp and and see if that fits. What do we think? What do we think? I quite like the F sharp there. I'm, I, I just want to just want to go through to make sure that it it fits harmonically. Now everything else is rhythm, so we've got the violas and the oboe. Let's just have a look and see. So, can you see what I'm doing on there? I've probably lifted it a bit too high, and if we solo just those two, then and Okay, actually that works. That works well. It must be another note that's 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 clashing. Now the other thing I quite like to do because there's a lot of there's a lot of these that are just the same. Um, let's just see if we can mix it up a bit and change change them a bit to add that little bit of interest within within the bulk of the notes. Okay, actually, let's just let's just check to make sure um, that the cellos. Thank you. 
Actually, that doesn't sound too bad. I wonder if it's a bassoonist. <laughs> uh, oh, wrong button. think I made the mistake there I think there we go and again I do like the way the bassoon comes in th comes through there. Uh, what I'm thinking is yesterday for the second half, I doubled up the oboe and with the clarinet. This time I'm thinking I'll double it up with the flute or it'd be interesting to try it with the piccolo. Let, let's let's see what it sounds like with the piccolo. And because I think it'll add um, is it the just trying to think which which march it is it's by da, 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 da. is it sans sens yeah. it's interesting isn't it one of the other things about going on going live and is going live is suddenly the things that you can remember normally go completely out of your head and you can't remember them at all uh, and let's have a listen so we don't want the first half of that obviously there's lots of little tweaks and things to do with this um, but it'd be interesting to see what you think when when the flute comes in and see and we can decide whether or not we want oh, sorry this is the piccolo uh, whether or not we want it would it go up another octave And then we'd have that real gap. Let's see if the top note fits. Oh, yep. Okay. Let's let's see what that sounds like. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that sounds too high? I think is it is it the very top note on the piccolo? That's another worry. Oh no, they can go. It's very near the top. Sometimes the piccolos, when they are that high, can actually drown out a whole orchestra. Um, <laughs> there is a joke. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Actually, there's some really, there's some, there are musicians' jokes are, are really good fun. Um, there are, and, and, a, and a lot of them can apply to every instrument, really. 
there, there was actually there was a, there was some a post on Facebook yesterday which was which was really good fun about ensemble playing. <laughs> and yeah I'll, I'll, i haven't got it with me but it's it's worth looking out it's got all sorts of tips like if you if you find if you find you're lost <laughs> or if if you find that everyone else is lost follow everyone else <laughs> um there was another one in there that uh, if you feel that everyone's lost ask everyone to stop and tune it was it was, it was something along those lines and actually it made it, it sort of tickled my sense of humor um right okay so what are we going to do with this what are we going to do with this flute or what with this piccolo let's just it'd be interesting to see what this sounds what we'll do is we'll so it's a d we're going to bring it down a fifth bring it down so it's on a fifth so it's actually going to be a fifth consecutive fifths but it's actually they're displaced by an octave and a half so this will sound very different. Let's see what you think. I quite like that. In fact, I think we'll keep that in. But at the end, I don't want it to finish on a fifth. We're going to finish on the third. And that hopefully sound, that'll hopefully sound all right. I'm just looking at the time, actually, and we're coming up to 45 minutes again. Um, let me know if you want to comment. Let, let me know what you think about the length of the videos and whether or not you find them interesting. Do you think I should condense them um, and perhaps try and do try and do it quicker uh do you think or do you like the idea that it's it takes time to develop because actually it it does take time and it's it i find that process and the brain it's the brainstorming it's it's the experimentation and the fun that can come from experimentation i think it's going to be interesting for me to sort of watch this video later because uh, what i tend to do is i'll i do this live on, on Facebook and I record it and then I put it up on YouTube later as well and uh, it's it, yeah, it's interesting for me to watch it when I'm looking when I'm doing that uh, give it because I watch all the way through and I can see myself thinking and that's quite comforting <laughs> um, and probably <laughs> for some surprising but uh, but yeah and actually, should we have a listen to how it finishes with that F sharp? The, the other bits that I haven't put in yet, um, let me just check, because one of the things that happens with, with this setup is sometimes I get all sorts of MIDI information that I don't want. And in fact, I'll just show you that. For some reason, my keyboard puts stuff in. Yeah, and, and these can sometimes, and I just clear clear all envelopes, um, for these recorded ones and then I can actually put in all of the automation um, there you go there's some more in there interestingly it's it normally comes out as the panner as the pan but uh, it's yeah so we'll clear all of the envelopes there I'll have to put that in I'll have to put that in it's another We'll stick it all at minus six at the moment and then what I like to do is is add the diminuendos at the end of the long notes or perhaps the the crescendo diminuendos at the at the end of the long notes and certainly at the end um and what i what i like to do um actually we'll just do it with this flute or with the, with the piccolo um oh, just bring that down and actually i like to zoom in 
so we can bring it down there and then don't want a straight line <laughs> and then we and, and and that should sound much more human in fact what would you do if you were playing a long note would you start diminuendoing straight away or would you diminuendo and then have a have a more a steeper diminuendo or would it be more gradual as a as a performer depends what everyone else is doing i suppose uh, and how it fits in the mix and that's one of the big differences between doing this and and playing with each one individually or being in a room with a whole orchestra where you're hearing a note and you can and everyone feels and instinctively knows that it's going to end on a certain beat of the by the conductor and it all everyone diminuendos and finishes at the same place but how do you do that when you've got everything in its own in its own space and that's something that i suppose once you hear the whole thing you can do it all the same but then you don't necessarily want it to be all the same you want all the instruments to sound like individuals as well um piccolo's quite high let's bring it across and do the whole there and then with the oboe uh have the oboe more gradual more gradual so the piccolo will is is a sort of a, right let's have a listen to that and there's a case in point you can hear that that note just it's just it sounds electronic doesn't it and what we'll do is we'll bring that <laughs> it's great it's great to have great to have comments um and i'll i'll sort that one for tomorrow <laughs> uh let's just what we're going to do is we're going to make this do you know i think mm. what's happening here why is why isn't that doing that so we'll bring that down and then you can hear what i've done now is i've got a big dominion minuendo on that oboe at the beginning and of course then you've got a diminuendo with the oboe but what we'll do is we need to then do that crescendo in as well What do we think? I like I like the F sharp at the end. Um, I'm just really painting in some some diminuendos here. I'm doing the waves. I've tried something different there instead of it going uh, being convex. It's now concave, and uh, we'll see we'll see how that works. Um, I think do we need one there? Let's quickly let's quickly stick a. A slight diminuendo in there, but we'll we'll make it a a late one at the end, and then this one we'll gradually bring up, and we'll make one of those.
Can you hear how the notes at the end now sound more natural because they're just diminuendoing nicely? Uh, what I suppose what I really would like to do is actually put the crescendo diminuendos in on the notes as well because that that also makes it sound quite quite realistic and uh, I'm just wondering what to do what I need to do I was just thinking while while that was happening is I need to make sure that the articulations are right because we want sustained legato uh, as I say you know later on the the woodwind might well be playing pizzicato not pizzicato staccato short notes and then when you play it back they're still playing short notes and you hear this in staccato mode and and it sounds really strange but sometimes that can be a, a serendipity as well right okay i'm gonna i think we're coming to a close here but let's just quickly hear what the the first four bars of the of these four days sounds like so that you can hear that there is a little bit of progression as i say this is based on evolution not revolution but you can hear there are big well the, the melodies certainly change this is a new melody uh, so that wouldn't have been on day one so here we go And I think that will be today's that will be today's post. And so what I need to do now is is when when I finish this, I'll I'll master that, which basically means putting putting it through an EQ and making sure it balances. Then I then put it through a piece of software called Ozone, where I then master it and bring the levels up so that it matches everything else and sounds sounds the right volume one of the really real difficulties is is getting the volumes right because sometimes a lot of music nowadays is produced so that it can be heard on phones um, it can be heard in a car it can be heard anywhere and that means that it's got to be mixed and mastered in a different well in a different way to how you would normally do it with a record records were designed so that you could sit down and listen to music played on a record nowadays it's it's much more i suppose it's something that we consume more um while we're doing something else it's a shame in some ways because there's there's so much more to music and one of the things i i really like about this is it's, and what i want to do over over the years to come is is sort of show people that actually it's amazing what you if you if you listen to the bits that are happening in between sometimes it can be like uh Oh, what is it um, where you have it's fractals and it gr gradually builds and everything's a mirror of itself and it just builds it's almost like a kaleidoscope but if you, the more you get in the more you learn and actually that's quite quite uh it's something that we have that happens in life in general really the more you look at it the more you find the more interesting everything is and it can be great fun um anyway so and then what I'll do is I'll post it on SoundCloud. I'll I'll do a video and put that put that on onto YouTube as well, and 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 see what happens. It's it's amazing how what started one morning with just one note is now something that takes a long time to to be able to do this and then produce the various bits on. 
and actually but it's really good fun anyway thank you very much for listening and and thank you for the tip i'll i'll see see if you can see what if it changes tomorrow <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more, but uh, thank you very much. I'm now going to see if this button works because actually that then everything will have worked perfectly today. And oh, did I say that without touching a bit of wood? Let's just see. Uh, thank you very much for, for watching and see you again soon. Cheers.